Hey everybody, I'm Sergeant Chaz Kibler, and joining me today is the Adjutant General of Maryland, Major General Timothy Galwin, and alongside him is the Command Sergeant Major, the Senior Enlisted Leader, Felissa Wilson. You both are here today to talk about the coronavirus vaccine, so let's just jump right into it. Sir, we'll start with you. What motivated you to get the vaccine? Uh, I was offered the opportunity, and I wanted to show to my family that uh, um, I want to be the leader, be out front, be uh, safe for my family, safe for the coworkers that I interact with, safe for the uh, the people in government that I, I see all the time. So it's essentially, I wanted to get out in front of this vac uh, of this uh, uh, virus as quickly as possible. So I, I leaped at the opportunity. Sergeant Major, I'll pose the same question to you. Pretty much the same thing. I think as far as um, my family, that was a big concern for me. I have a lot of elderly family members who, you know, have vulnerabilities. Um, I wanted to also be a leader, not only for my family, but also as a leader here in the Maryland National Guard, just step out and take the opportunity to, you know, say, hey, this vaccine is safe, um, it's been proven, um, and if, if I took it, you know. There seems to be some commonality between you two. Family seems to be an ongoing theme, which brings me to my next question. Was there any hesitancy to get the vaccine? Yeah, of course. I mean, the vaccine was rolled out in a hurry. and. Uh, Life is full of risks, and this is, in my mind, it was essentially a uh, a, a, a risk management um, exercise where risk is simply uh, consequence versus likelihood, and you compare the consequences and likelihood of getting the the COVID virus versus the consequences and likelihood of what could possibly go wrong with this vaccine. The consequences of the COVID virus are known. They're, they're in some cases, pretty bad. Uh, the likelihood was, um, it's likely that you're gonna get the virus in this environment if uh, you don't follow all the rules and, um, and there's a likelihood that, that things can go wrong, particularly, and I'm not, I'm not especially young anymore. Um, the consequences of the vaccine are scientifically known, uh, there's a lot of people who have these uh, unknown uh, expectations for what could possibly go wrong. The likelihood of that are infinitesimally small. So I compared the two and I just think that it, it makes absolute sense to, to go with the vaccine and, uh, and I'm glad that I did. Yeah, I had a similar thought process. I just thought to myself, I'd rather have that extra insurance of the vaccine within my body than not have it at all because we know what COVID can do to Absolutely. us compared it's to the vaccine. known versus unknown. Exactly. Sergeant Major, did you have any hesitancy when it came to the vaccine? Of course. Um, I'm African-American, so um, we know historically there were some things that, you know, most African-Americans are very hesitant with any vaccine, but um, we've taken other vaccines and they've been proven safe. Um, yes, the vaccine was rolled out relatively fast, so that was a concern to me. But just like General Gowan said, the the known consequences of getting the COVID virus versus the um, possibly known or the unknown consequences of the vaccine, the virus just far outweighed what the vaccine would possibly do. So I, I took a chance and I felt that my risk of taking the vaccine was much safer than risking the opportunity of getting COVID-19 and not being able to recover or not being able to recover fully, or even, as I said, passing it along to a family member who wouldn't recover. So I chose to, to get the vaccine. As military leaders, did that affect your decision process, decision making process to get the vaccine? And did you face any internal pressure within yourself as well? So uh, the reason it's so important to us is because of readiness. We've got to be ready to uh, do the missions of the state and federal government that they ask of us. And if we're all down for sickness, we can't do that. So it requires a little bit of uh, courage, I guess, to, to do the right thing and, and get the vaccine. So it absolutely, uh, I, I, that was just one more thing to enter into the equation. My, my ne the, necess the necessity for readiness uh, that uh, helped me, you know, put me over the, uh, over the edge to get the vaccine. Yeah, you two set the example and to see you both get the vaccine, I think it would ultimately put a lot of soldiers and airmen at ease. And I think it, it, it helps with the, the decision making process for them as well. So I commend you both for, for stepping out there and getting the vaccine. No problem.
Um, speaking of the vaccine, for those who don't know enough about it, what resources are out there for them to get as much information as possible to make an informed decision? Well, first I would refer them to the, the Center Disease Control CDC website. Uh, everything you need to know is, is right there. Um, fortunately, us in the National Guard, because we're so close to uh, the operations, the testing and the vaccination uh, operations that are going on, we have a lot of resources right there with us. The Maryland Department of Health and their website has a lot of information as well. I get a chance to talk to a lot of the, the smartest doctors in the state because they're working for the governor's task force. And one in particular, who's also a, a major, I think, maybe a lieutenant colonel in, in the Army Reserves is Dr. Marcosi. And he's one of the leading experts in Maryland Department of Health. And he actually uh, told me and told a lot of other people that there's only four ingredients in this vaccine. There's sugar, salt, fats, and all those are to help to uh, um, preserve the, the actual uh, main ingredient, which is this thing called messenger RNA. I don't know anything about messenger RNA, but I know it teaches your body how to create the antibody. And those, so there's basically four ingredients that are going into this thing. And, I, and, and the only thing is that they could, um, that is any different than everything else that's in your body is this one messenger RNA and it's simply teaching your body uh, how to do something different. So. That's all that I needed to know to, to make me feel safer for you. just it. dropped a lot of science on us, sir. I, I'm an I, engineer. <laughs> sorry. It comes with the package. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Major, just to make sure, we probably already touched on this, but are soldiers and airmen obligated to get the vaccine? Do they have to get it? No. At this time, soldiers and airmen are not obligated. It is not a mandatory vaccine that the Department of Defense is rolling out right now. So strictly getting the vaccine is purely voluntary. So um, as, as leaders and other people, we encourage soldiers to get the vaccine. Um, however, there are some leaders that still have not taken the vaccine. So, you know, we're just encouraging all Americans, you know, whether you are a service member, uh, whether you are just a teacher, a medical professional, um, you know, we're out here and we're getting the uh, vaccine and we're encouraging Americans to do that and, in and of the same. And I think as far as the military, we are always out front leading the way. So I think it's important for us that are service members and the soldiers, especially Maryland Guard, Army and Air, that we get out here and we show our community that we are out here giving the vaccine, but we're also out here taking the vaccine because it's safe and we believe in it. And we believe in getting our community back to, you know, herd immunity. So we're all here having a conversation about the vaccine, but as we know, these conversations tend to play out a lot differently in different settings. So. What were the conversations like with your friends, family, and coworkers, and what were you seeing on social media? Um, I have these conversations practically every single day. In fact, I was in the barbershop yesterday and had conversations about the vaccine with the, uh, all, everyone that was sitting in there. And uh, it, we talk a lot about what the different types, you know, there's three or four different um, brands that are out there, and some are one shot, some are two shots, and uh, a lot of conversations about how to get the shots, and. You know, are, do you feel safe? And, and I, I feel like I'm, a, I'm an agent for the vaccination process at this point. So I, I want to tell everyone, uh, trust it, do it, get it. And, uh, and uh, it, I, I have felt fine um, the, the, the whole entire way. I mean, there was a little bit of side effects at first, but other than that, uh, I feel great. And, I, and it gives me more confidence and I feel like I'm actually making a difference in the fight. Sergeant Major, what were those conversations like for you? So those conversations for me, there was some fam family members that had hesitancy and um, they all kept saying, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, and I said, well, I'm gonna get the vaccine as soon as I have an opportunity. Um, the majority of my family members are older. Um, so I encouraged them as soon as they had an opportunity to get the vaccine, to go get the vaccine. Number one, I still love them. I do. A, I am a big family oriented person. So I want to see them. I want to be able to hug them. And I'm like, hey, if I get the vaccine and you get the vaccine, then I can get one of those big old great hugs that we always talk about. Um, my family is also full of a lot of educators, uh, nurses, and also military service members. So we've all kind of stepped out there and gotten the vaccine for those of us who are eligible to get it. And we're just encouraging the ones that are coming behind us to get it as soon as they have the opportunity. So you've both been vaccinated. Uh, tell me, how much did it suck when after you got that shot, did your arm hurt? What was that like? <laughs> it, uh, well, each shot had a different effect. Uh, the first shot, and I had Moderna, the first shot, um, a little bit of soreness, 
I didn't really feel it going in. It wasn't sore until a couple hours later. Uh, and I, almost an in, in, uh, imperceptual amount of nausea. The second shot, a little more. Uh, the, it was the booster. Um, it wasn't until the next day that I, I had flu-like symptoms and I woke up with it and kind of got worse as the morning progressed. And by, by 1400, I forgot that I had any symptoms at all. Um, so that was my personal experiences. It's not enough to prevent. In fact, people tell me that that means this, this stuff's actually working. So good to go. Sergeant Major, did you have trouble reaching for stuff and just putting on your shirt after the shot? What were your general side effects? Actually, no. So of course the first <laughs> shot, yes, the soreness in the arm, but um, it almost felt the same as the flu shot to me as far as you know the soreness that I received in my arm um, and no other side effects after the first shot. The second shot was a little bit different. Um, yes, I had soreness again, um, but later during the night, I developed like a headache and, you know, but for the most part, just rested throughout the next day and the headache was gone and, and I was fine. So I didn't get any other nausea or anything like that. Some people, it, it just varies, just like the virus itself, you know, the, the symptoms that you may have. And I know a lot of people that had no symptoms. So at all, I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I was one of the first ones that I knew to get the shot. So yeah. I didn't know that there was going to be side effects. I yeah. think the word started to spread after I got my, my second shot. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? You were yeah. patient zero. Huh? I, yeah. Well, it was patient zero for everyone that I knew. So yeah, he warned me. Well. He warned me. He, he told me. He <laughs> the said, word oh, got out you, after you might that. have some, some side effects. So yeah. uh, actually, I, I did. And but just like I said, the next day it was it was all over with and I felt fine. So. Well, I want to thank you both for being here, but before we wrap up, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, just that I'm really proud of the work that the Maryland National Guard has done in this entire uh, operation going back over a year now. Everything that we've done from uh, helping with testing to uh, food distribution and, and uh, helping uh, with transportation of, of uh, the PPE on behalf of the Maryland Department of Health, all the stuff that we did early on, and especially the way that we've reacted and led the way for the vaccination effort. I I'm, couldn't be more proud of the Maryland National Guard and, and the, the work that we've done to help the state and the nation in this. Absolutely. Same thing. I think our, our soldiers and our airmen have really stepped up to the fight. Um, they've done a tremendous job and they're always out there and they're positive. And I always hear people who know that I'm in the military and they'll say, oh, I went and got my shot and the soldiers were so nice. So I went and got tested and the soldiers were so nice. Um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate hearing that we're out here and we're doing a good job and we're making a positive impact in our communities, in our state. And of course, you know, all the media attention that is given, you know, the thumbs up to us. I, I love it. So, you know. Go Maryland Guard. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank you both for being here and taking time out of your busy day to talk to a little OE5 like me. You made me feel real special, so I appreciate you that. You are special. <laughs> thank you. If you want to learn more about the coronavirus, feel free to visit the website that you see at the bottom of the screen. Or if you actually want to talk to a human being, feel free to call the Maryland Army National Guard Medical Detachment, and they'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. For the Maryland National Guard, I'm Sergeant Chaz Kipler.